Ephesians by way of a couple other scriptures. And we're going to talk about uh, Jesus as our administrator of the last days, of the events of the last days that are going to take place. The one that's going to be administrating the things of God to us and to this world is going to be Jesus Christ himself. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Amen. So when Ed and Donna go down south to Honduras, amen, it's going to be the Lord administering and administrating through them his kingdom. Amen. And uh, you all know that in this walk with God, we start somewhere and we finish somewhere. Amen. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. yes. How many of you, you've already gotten started, right? You all know that. And, and we've covered that. And it's just an awesome thing to see what God has done to get us to begin. And I'll go over those things in just a second. But I want to read this to you so that you understand that the Lord is going to be very watchful. Somebody said that in the service already today. That the Lord is watching. And He is. He's going to be watchful over what goes on in the next ten years. Very, very closely. He's going to be watching you very, very closely. And watching over you very, very closely. And so Ephesians 1.10 says this, with a view, we'll get into that in a minute, with a view to an administration suitable to the fullness of the times. That is, summing up all things in Christ, things in the heavens and things on the earth in Him. Amen? So it's all going to be taken care of. It's all going to be summated in Jesus Christ. Everything. So when he says in the beginning of this verse, with a view to an administration a view, it means we have a view right now that history is wrapping up. Mm -hmm. Amen. It's wrapping up. If, if you don't believe that or you don't think that or that hasn't gotten to you yet, amen, I want you to grab yourself by the shoulders and start shaking yourself a little bit. <laughs> history is wrapping up. We're, we're at the end. Amen? We're not in a place where it's going to be years and years and years and years. I don't, I don't see that. I really don't. And I see Jesus so at work in this administration that's an administration of the last days. That means it's a different type of administration. It's a different type of way he's dealing with his people. Hallelujah. Are you with me? So it's not going to be the same. It's, it's going to be different. It's going to be very, very different. And, and I'm preparing for it right now. Praise God. Because I'm used to doing things a certain way. I'm used to, you know, I've got my ways and so forth, like you do. And, and those are going to have to change. Amen. Amen. <laughs> like, good for you, Pastor Ed. They're going to have to change. All right? And so we're, we're wrapping things up. Praise God. So where we begin and where we end, the Lord is very, very interested in, especially where we end, because we already had our beginning. Last week I talked to you about three things that we start out with. You know, the Lord is very, very serious about our lives, because we start out with a lot. He's very caring about what, what's going to go on in our life and what's going to go happen, because He gives us so much at the very beginning. Have you seen that? Have you recognized that? Because he really has. He's given us, we st watch, look at uh, what's on the screen there. We start out with every spiritual blessing. That's Ephesians 1, 3 to 6. Every spiritual blessing we start out with. We don't have to prove ourselves. We don't have to go through a lot of life. We get it right at the very beginning. And then number two, we start out with redemption. We're saved. We're redeemed. We're bought back. We're bought back by the Lord. Amen? We don't belong to the enemy anymore. We don't belong to ourselves. We belong to Him. And that's Ephesians 1, 7 to 10. And then number three, we start out with an inheritance. And that's Ephesians 1, 11 to 14. We start out with the blessing. Glory to God. And all this takes place. He puts so much into us in the very beginning. So that we'll finish strong. Amen. This is the hour that we live in right now. Where he's invested all that in us. All these, these three things, which if you look at it, that's an enormous amount. He's invested in us. With the, with the end, with the view, like I said, in mind, that we're going to finish strong. Amen. He wants us 
to finish strong. Amen? So, Jesus had an end in mind for us when he took hold of us. When he called us, amen, he called us with a purpose. He didn't just call us and say, all right, I've called you, I'm giving you all this, now I'll be, you know, I'll be back someday to take you home or whatever. In the meantime, you just go out and have a good time and, and, and have a lot of fun and uh, I'll see you when, you know, when I get back. That's not the way the Lord works. Philippians 3.12 says this, not that I have already obtained this or have already arrived at my goal. Has anybody in here arrived yet at what you want, at what you want you see your life to be? Mm -hmm. I, I haven't arrived there yet. Paul said he didn't arrive there. But I want you to understand the Lord, when He saves us, when He gives us all those things, He has a goal for us in mind. He has something in store for us. A destination, I'll call it. Amen? That's up there in, in parentheses. The Lord saves us to go somewhere, to, to do something. He doesn't just save us to live in static the rest of our life. And so Paul says, since I know this, since I know that God has a goal for me, after the comma, I press on to take hold for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. If you don't understand what pressing on is, the best I can explain it, I, I, I've been through this myself personally, and I know what pressing on is. Last week, I got on an airplane at, at about quarter to midnight, and I took a night flight, a red eye, to Naples, Florida. And I want to tell you something. I understood what pressing on was. You know, trying to stay, first of all, get some sleep on the airplane, pressing in, so because I knew what the morning was going to, and when I got up in the morning, you know, it was like, my feeling, I had no feeling in my body, you know, I'm used to sleeping at night and everything. And so I had to press on and then I went to New Hope Church in Naples, Florida last week. And I had, I had to go through worship and I was tired and everything. And then all of a sudden the worship leader comes out with living hope. And I came alive, boom, after that. That was it, you know. And I mean, they did a good job. They really did. And I was singing on the top of my lungs and crying and carrying on and everything. But, beloved, amen, it's, it, it's, it's like that with our life. Our life gets weary. It gets wearisome. Amen? It's, it's, you get up and sometimes the same thing happens day after day. It gets wearisome. But I want you to understand, you got to press on. He, that's, our, that's our job, to press in and press on, and we'll get there. Amen? Verse 13, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, doesn't say 28 things, just says one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Anybody ever seen a, where the runners run around the track and then and there's a wire that they have to break? And so, you know, they don't just, they don't just run like this, but they stick their, their chest out. Amen? They want to get that little edge, that little advantage, amen, to, 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 to break that, that cord at the end. Amen? And that's what pressing on means. You do, you do a little extra. You, you push yourself a little bit harder. Amen? Because there's a goal. There's a prize to be won. Hallelujah. And I, 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 I thank the Lord that he called this uh, goal that we have to win a prize. Amen? Because this was uh, the public games that they used to watch all the time. And so these were runners. These were people that we're uh, performing in these public games, amen? And so I want you to understand the prize is a public game. The prize is something you're going to do in public. Right now I hear screams. Ah, I don't want to do this in public. I don't want to, I just want to live a, live a quiet life and go to be with Jesus. I'll be in public church. Amen? The Bible, <laughs> I, I looked this word up, prize, and it says it's, it's, it's sometimes used as a metaphor. It's not used as a metaphor here. It is literally a public display of your running a race in front of people. Amen? For them to see, for them to see your life 
and for them to change. <coughs> what changed me was watching a person live the Christian life that didn't live the Christian life several years before this period of time. And it did something in me. And it, yeah, I'm telling you, your faith has got to be public. I know the government tells you you've got to be private about your faith. But this is something that takes place in public, out in front of people, amen, where it's not safe. But that's okay, because God's going to get glory. He amen. says, God's called me in heavenward in Christ Jesus to do this. So I want you to understand, Jesus gave you all that in the beginning, because there's a prize you're going to receive at the end. And that prize is done in public. God is going to put your face out in front of people. Amen. If he wants to, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Do I need to, do I need to, you're going to tar and feather me? <laughs> He's going to put your face in front of people. Not this face, I don't think this face is, you know, I, I love Pastor Don White, he says I have a radio face. <laughs> Amen. Uh, you know, and look at the impact that man is having in our community. Amen? So, you, you know, you may think he has a radio face, but he's doing great work in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Why? Because he's public. He's public. He's not private. He's public. That's where Jesus wanted everything to be, in public. Amen. Come on. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So let's go through a couple of these here. This morning we're going to Ephesians 1.15. And... Uh, I want you and me to be in a good position to finish strong. Amen. Hallelujah. I love you. I love this church. I love where this church is going. You may, you may look around and say, uh, well, you know, we, maybe we should get there pretty soon, huh? Well, we're going to get there. Amen? And I want you to be in a position to finish strong. Number one, you're going to finish strong. God has a way of doing things, church that is a little bit different than it's the way that we do things. And the first thing, the first thing out of the box he wants us to understand is that we love all the saints. That is, that's square one. And John, first <laughs> John, book first John, John says, you know, you go back, you got to go back, man. If you don't love your brother, amen, well, I don't even know if you know Jesus. Didn't he say that, something like that? And so he, he, here's square one. Here's well, all this that God has put into our life to establish us. Amen. The one thing that we need to do is we need to love the saints. Ephesians 1.15. For this reason I too, having heard of the faith in the Lord Jesus, which exists among you. Everybody knows you're saved by faith, right? So everybody's got faith that's saved in this room today. Right? Amen. Amen? Everybody's got faith. So, and Paul says, your faith exists among you. How did he know that? He says, because you have love for the saints. The only way he could see faith in people is by how they loved one another. Yeah. Wow, that's big. Amen? You can't just say, I've got faith. Look at me. <laughs> wow, I'm just a man of faith. He says, the reason I know that you have faith is because you love the brothers. Amen. You love the people in the church. You love the saints of God. He says, that exists among you. And he says in verse 16, he says, I don't cease giving thanks for you while making mention of you in my prayers. Amen. So Paul says, I'm interceding for you that this... That this Get stronger and stronger and stronger. Beloved, I want to tell you something. When, when, when Paul, in the beginning, and, and when Peter and John got in trouble in the beginning, and they went to prison, and they were uh, brought before the Sanhedrin, and different things like that, amen? After they were exonerated like our president was, amen? Where was the first place that they ran to? Did they run to Walmart? Did they run to the restaurant? 
The first place they ran to was to the church. They ran to the fellowship. They ran to the body. Amen? Because they loved each other. And because they loved each other, that was the reason why, with the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit could come on that love and, and could make them witnesses to the ends of the earth. The only thing that's going to make you and me a witness to the end of the earth is if we love the brethren. Amen? I'm not talking about loving the lost. I'll get into that maybe later. But I'm talking about loving the brethren. If you love the brethren, you're going to love the lost. It just, it's just a consequence of loving the brethren. And that's where the power of God. That's what's going to make this so different in, in the coming years. Is because we're going to work with a church that loves each other. I am overjoyed. I really am overjoyed that I can come into a building on Sunday morning. It wasn't always this way. But where people come in and they truly love each other. And you all truly love each other. I know that. And you, I, you all love me and I love you. And you all know that too. Amen? And I want you to understand that that's a foundation that God is going to build on. Amen? Because we've been through all the other stuff. We've been through the, the unloving stuff when people talking and this and that and the other thing and thinking we're, Susan and I are, you know, uh, 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 Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> and I am just so glad we're, we've got, we love each other. Amen? Hallelujah. And so that's where God can start working. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and just say, hallelujah, this is awesome. Hallelujah. Because it is, amen? We love each other. Praise God. So that's the foundation. Praise God. And that love has a manifestation. <coughs> Glory to God. That manifests our faith because we love the saints. Praise God. Number two. And God, because we love the saints, God's going to begin to give us revelation. He's going to begin to reveal things. That's why Louise came up and asked for prayer. God's going to give it for that situation. God has to give us revelation. We love people. We love individuals. And so God, God is, but we've got to have the wisdom of God. Amen? Amen, amen? And so he's going to give it to us. Ephesians 1, 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Ed likes this verse, Ed Barnes over here. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. Amen. I know this man prays that every day. I know that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling. Amen? What, what he's hoping for in your life. Not what you're hoping for. Amen? Most of us, we just want to hope for a good job and a... You know, you know, maybe a nice vehicle to get around in because of the snow and everything. You know, that's what we're hoping. No, he has a hope that we have to espouse and take it into ourselves. What are the riches of the glory, here it is, of his inheritance in the saints? Jesus Christ puts all of his affections and considers all of his riches in you, in the saints. If there's any value in any currency that heaven recognizes, as far as Jesus is concerned, that currency, that value is in you because he loves you. Do you hear what I'm saying? No wonder we have to love each other. No wonder, no wonder he puts such a value. No wonder he builds on that foundation of love. Is because that's what he does himself. And if, if, if Jesus was here in the flesh today, if you asked him, what, what do you value the most? He would say, they're here today, my saints. Isn't that beautiful? He's going to open our eyes to see that. He's going to begin to open our eyes to see the value that we have in each other. He's going to do that, amen? And it's, it's going to... Uh, you, you ask me as a pastor... You know, how do you get people motivated to witness? How do you get people... Well, i got to get you to love. i got to get you to love. And I think you're, you're loving. You're not, there's not, I'm not preaching a sermon on, well, you've got to love each other more. You love each other. So this is the foundation where God is going to open the eyes of your heart. He's going to do that because you're loving one another. He's going to open the eyes of your heart and you're going to get that burden to start talking to people, to start being public... Not, not public figures where you're, you know, 
you're up to ridicule, but you know, you're going to be out there, and you're going to be out and about, and you're going to be talking about things. And that's a result of your faith because you're loving the, the saints. There are principles here we have to know. Amen? So the, so the glory of his inheritance is in the saints. And he wants the saints to get to their destination. He wants the saints to get their prize in the arena of public, of, 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 of the public. Amen? And verse 19, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power towards us who believe? Glory to God. So I want you to understand that this love that you have for each other is going to start getting powerful. And it's going to start manifesting itself in the power of Almighty God. Mm. It is. That's yeah. what's going to happen. People are going to get saved. People are going to get jump in your car uh, when it come, when you're going to church. Amen? You might be picking up hitchhikers on the way to church. I don't know. But they're going to be flying in your car. They're going to be jumping in the back of your pickup. Amen? Why? It's the greatness of God's power that's going to begin to do it. Amen? He's going to begin to open, enlighten the eyes of your heart to... to <laughs> You know, open the windows when you ride to church so that they can jump in. Amen? It's awesome. Number three. We finish strong because we have the working of His might. The working of His might. What does that mean? It says, these are in accordance with the working of the strength of His might, which He brought about in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at the right hand in the heavenly places. Watch this. Far above all rule, authority, power, and dominion. Mm. There are four, those are four words. That's, that's everything that rules what we see. And it affects what we see going on in this world. Have to do, I'm not going to get into detail, but it has to do, do with rule, authority, power, and dominion. I'll give you an example of the word dominion. Adam and Eve sinned. Adam and Eve sinned. Did they have dominion? And they, what happened? They gave it away. And who did they give it to? Satan. And what did Jesus do when he died on the cross? Got it back. Got it back. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Somebody want to run around Amen. the church? Come on. Amen. That's dominion. That's dominion. And the Bible says right here, we're reading it in front of us. He brought about something in Christ when he raised him from the dead. This is what he did. Far above. He put him far above at the right hand of God in heavenly places. Above all this rule and authority and power and dominion. Amen. All that stuff that creates chaos in the world. Amen. He's above it. He's above it. Amen. Hallelujah. And every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the one to come. And he put all things in subjection under his feet. And he gave, them, uh, gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Is that power? It says in the beginning, up at the top here, it says... These are in, the court, in, in accordance. In other words, you love the brethren. You move that way. You show your faith by your love. The power of God begins to work. The power of God begins to operate. The strength of His might begins to operate. Amen? And you begin to manifest the power of God in your life. And it fills. The church goes out and fills all in all. What's going to fill all in all? A couple of real savvy saints that know what they're doing. It's going to be the entire church filling the world. Hallelujah. In the public. Now I want to, do, I want to read one scripture in Daniel and I'll close with this. This is why the Lord's administration is suitable for the time that we live in. You can trust it. I said, you can trust him. Amen. This is Daniel 7, 21. 
And this is, this is just a picture. I know it, it has application to the end times, but it also has application now. Right now, the day and age that we live in. And, and Daniel was just observing something that was going on, that, that God, sh God showing him. And he said this, as I watched, this horn, and a horn is a symbol of power. Amen? So it's, it's something powerful. It's a powerful leader or a powerful person or a powerful individual or at least they think they're powerful. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. A lot of people in government today think they're powerful and they're really not and they're coming down. Amen? Amen. And so is the enemy himself. And so usually when you see in prophecy a horn, it usually has something to do with Satan himself. Okay, so this horn was waging war against the holy people and defeating them. You ever felt defeated? Mm -hmm. ah, come on, I see hands, I see hands all over the place. All right. You ever felt? That's what the devil does. Amen? First of all, we just heard with a shout in this room that he doesn't have dominion anymore. Amen. Hallelujah, he doesn't have dominion anymore. But there are, there are times... Amen? When he will get so on your nerves and under your skin and do so many things, amen? And it's overkill, I understand that. You feel defeated. Verse 22. Until the Ancient of Days came and pronounced judgment in the favor of the holy people of the Most High. And the time came when they possessed the kingdom. I want you to understand, we're living in day and age right now. This, this, this puts it in a nutshell. Amen? We're living at a time when all this stuff can get under our skin. All this stuff, and then we can begin to give the, the, the devil himself dominion and authority to torment us and to torment us and to torment us over and over again. Amen? When he doesn't even have that authority, we just give it to him. But I want you to understand, amen? The Ancient of Days is coming in. God Himself is coming in. He came in at the cross and He pronounced judgment in favor of the holy people of God. Now, didn't He do that for us? Hallelujah. Amen. He pronounced favor for us, for the holy people of the, of the Most High. And the time came, I want you to look at this and underline it. And the time came when they possessed the kingdom. Beloved, I want to tell you something. You're going to possess the kingdom. Amen. You are going to possess the kingdom. You say the kingdom's not very big right now. The kingdom's not very big right now. You know, well, number one, you don't need to say that. And number two, it's getting big, bigger. It's advancing on a daily basis. And listen, the kingdom of God is presented to you. You are going to possess that kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. So my final question to you, yes, Todd? The, well, the image that I just got, the, the difference between the, the horn and a trumpet, the trumpet is God. That's, that's a given. That's understood. The horn is a symbol of stolen control. Well, he did. He, he steals it. That's, what, that's the only way he gets any authority, is he steals it. Is he tricks you, he deceives you, and, and, and he, take, you know, he usurps that authority. Amen? And he doesn't have it anymore. Praise God. So my question is, at the end of all this, the Word of God tells us that God the Father has already came and pronounced judgment on the enemy and favor on the holy people of God, and it's time now for the kingdom of God to advance. I want to ask you a question. Where do you see your face in the future? Where do you see... I just want to ask you, I'm not saying you're going to get it right now. I'm not saying you're going to get an answer right now. I just want to ask you, and I want you to, this morning, your heart to be open to the, not the possibility, but the desire of God, that prize that God has for you, is where He's going to put your face in the future. And how you are going to influence people. The kingdom of God is about influence. Amen? It's about influence. A lot of people say, well, people that you know preach like you do, Pastor Ed, you want you want to take dominion. You want to you want to have dominion. You want to have uh, you know everything. No. 
All I want to do is influence. All the Lord wants us to do is influence people. They make their own decisions. We influence. And I want you to be open to wherever God wants to put your face in this world. Because He's going to do that. Amen? And I don't care if you are 13 years old or if you are 103 here today. He's going to do that in some shape or form. Amen? And would you, this morning, as we pray, this is going to be a final prayer this morning, would you stand and ask the Lord with me where He wants to put our faces in the future? Amen? And let's be open. Let Him enlighten the eyes of our heart. We love the body. We love the beloved. Now we have a foundation to build on, and He's going to do this. So, Father, I ask in Jesus' name, as we all stand, Lord, I ask you, where do you want to put our face in the future? I don't care what we've been through, Paul says. I forget the things which are behind, and I press on. So, Father, the future is where we have to see our faces, where we have to see our influence, where we have to see the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit working through us, just like they did in the book of Acts, because they loved each other. And, Lord, you're going to put us out there. You're going to put us out there, but it's okay. And Lord, we just pray today that you will begin to speak to me, you'll begin to speak to Pastor Susan, to Luis, to Ed, to Donna, to Lord, everybody in this room, Brenda, to uh, Lord, to back, back in the back, to Lee. Father, in Jesus' name, all over this room today, show us where you want to put our face. Yes, Father God. Because, Lord, we, even the prophets can't tell us that. You have to tell us that. And Lord, we're just, we're just saying, like Isaiah, here I am, Lord. Here I am. Send me. Send me. You're going to tell me where you're going to put my face. And my face will be there, Father. And Lord, I thank you and I praise you that we can be open to this. Because you, Lord, are going to get the glory. Your inheritance is in us, Lord. And we, as your children, want to honor you and respect you. And bring glory and see your kingdom advance as the greatest mountain amongst all the mountains that are in this world. We just thank you and give you glory and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise God.